What is up guys and welcome back to another episode of Restoring Hope for Hass. Hope you guys are all doing well. It has been a while since I've released an episode but I'm back on it. Got this episode out. I'm going to have the other one out in the next couple days hopefully so we can get this series flowing and get it going because um, in this first season it is going to be it's going to be a long season. We're going to be at the back of the grid um, for almost every race. But we're going to see if we can advance, see if we can get ahead of Williams and Alfa Romeo and then maybe next season push more towards the midfield and, and make this Haas team a stronger side. So you can see here we're going to, we're looking through our upgrades, seeing what we can upgrade on the car. We've got loads coming in. Hopefully they come in. We need them to come in because we're not going to have many resource points. And as you can see, we go on, we get the halo upgrade from the Russ. <clears throat> so it's a good start already. Um more resource points as well so we're going to get more aero in uh, before the monaco grand prix um obviously in monaco it's going to be tough that's going to be a boring race and it's going to be all about the qualifying to see if maybe we can get ahead of the williams and the alphas but right now we're focused on the next race which is spain and all of our upgrades come in okay. what a week this is for us um at Haas, and uh, we're still back at the grid but it's progress it is progress. You can see I'm already getting this power upgrade ready for Azerbaijan. Um, a race that I do enjoy. Although, um, especially during that middle sector in this Haskar, we've got to be careful because getting wing damage through 25 laps, I think it is around there. 20, 25 laps. Um, wing damage is a huge possibility. So, <laughs> But that's for another day. Um, here we are into Spain. Going straight into qualifying and... It's not one of my favourite tracks, um, especially on 100 AI, I do struggle a bit, so it'll be interesting to see how I do. Uh, coming on to the first lap, it's it's one of those tracks where it's like, I like racing around here and it's good, but the AI just seem a bit too strong for me, especially on 100 AI. So I'm going to see how I do, and you can see coming around this corner, I'm always go, already going wide there, um, so still kind of feeling the car. All, all the time before I do these qualifying as well, I'm, I'm in practice for about 30 minutes, messing around with a setup, seeing which one is best for me, um, and it didn't really feel right around here. I was struggling a bit with the setup, and um, it, the car just it didn't it didn't feel as good as it could have been. But uh, coming through this last two, uh, the last chicane here, it's not bad, um, but it's a very average lap. I would say could be a lot better. And as we cross the line, we are ahead of our teammate, but that's to be expected at this point. Um, but we are going to be down in 18th, George Russell in 20th, but I think he got held up on his lap. So realistically, we're P19, only ahead of our teammate. So coming on to this uh, last qualifying lap, we're going to see if we can find half a second, maybe even 6, 7, 8 tenths to try and drop ahead of the Williams and get close to the Alfa Romeos um, in this race. You can see going into the turn one, we're breaking a lot later. And coming around this right-hander, we're going to see if we can get back all that time that we lost. And we're a tenth down, but much better through that long right-hander. And we've gained a tenth there, so a tenth in the first sector, which is crucial for us. Because uh, every tenth matters, uh, especially back here. If we can get up to P16 or whatever, uh, we're going to be battling against the Alfa Romeo and Williams. So if there is a safety car, we're ahead of those cars and we can maybe capitalise on that. And you can see coming through these corners, we go a little bit wide there, but we are two tenths up, so it's not a bad lap so far. So we're going to push it around this corner, see if we can get as far as... And we lose the rear end straight into the wall, and there's the first big mistake we've made all season in qualifying. And it's the first time we've wrecked the car. So, um, not an ideal start to the Spanish Grand Prix, and not an ideal ending to the, to the qualifying for us. You can see him storming through the tunnel, through into the garage. Um, Gunvenstein is there, but... It's not a great qualifying. We're going to finish in P19. I feel like we could have maybe got P17, maybe P16 if we put in the perfect lap, but it wasn't to be. Anyway, we're going to head on over to the race and see what we can do, see if we can uh, get up a couple of positions and get past the Williams the and Alfa Romeo. The has been a permanent fixture on the Formula 1 calendar for over 30 years now, and for good reason. Do you remember Michael Schumacher's absolute dominance here in that rain-soaked Grand Prix in 1996? That day he took his first ever victory for Ferrari and we've had many more iconic moments since. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid we have Bottas, Perez, Carlos Sainz, 
Anne Norris, Leclerc, Ricardo, Fernando Alonso, and Pierre Gasly, Ocon, Vettel, Yuki Tsunoda, and Stroll, Raikkonen, Giovinazzi, George Russell, and Nicholas Latifi, Mazepin, and Stevens. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. So you see there, Jeff, he, he's buzzing. He wants another top 10 finish. Um, very unlikely, of course, that came in Imola, I think, what was it, a P7? Yeah, it was P7 in Imola, which is an unbelievable result in the Haas. But you can see here, we're going to start on the mediums. Um, and we'll try and take them for as long as possible, depending on how the race is going. If we can take them longer, and maybe hope for a safety car, and then put on the softs, we'll do that. Because that will give us the best chance of points. If not, and we are going to be fine now from Arizona Williams, we'll just see how the race goes. We'll start on the mediums, and if we're fighting an Alpha or a Williams, and they try and undercut, then we'll come in for the hards. But, um, yeah, it's, it's the only way we get points, really, at this stage in the career mode, is... If a safety car comes out, like in Imola, I think two there was two or three safety cars or whatever. Uh, a lot of people spinning at turn two and three out in Imola, and that helped us get up to P7. So, so we're going to see what we can do here. We did take some penalties, and that's why we're starting from the back of the grid. You can see five red lights, and away we go here in the Spanish Grand Prix, and we get a decent start behind Latifi. We're going to try and go up the inside, but then we move to the outside as he covers us off. See what we could do here. There is room down the inside now, so we are going to go down the inside. You almost make contact with the Williams driver. We're going to go down the inside of both Alfa Romeo and the Williams, and we get through, and our teammate goes around the outside, getting up into P17, and you can see behind the Alfa and the Williams, they've even made contact, or one of them spun, because they have lost a lot of time, and now we are going to fight our teammate. We're going to see if we can get past him on the hard tyres. We actually started on the hard tyres, not the mediums, so we're going to try and take the hard tyres for as long as possible. And going down the inside of our teammate, who's on the mediums. Can we make this move done? It looks like we've got it stuck, but our teammate comes back around the outside, and this is fighting against our teammate. We need to get this move done, otherwise he's going to hold us up this race, and we do get it done. So it's a good move from us. We're up in the P17 on the hard tyres. So it's a good, good start. And yeah, I thought I was starting on the mediums, but I'm actually starting on the hards. Um... So we're going to try and take the hards for as long as possible and then switch over to the medium so we'll be faster at the end. But here's what happened at the start of the race with Latifi. He's starting in P18 and he's going to see both Haas go past him on the right and the left. So he's stuck in the middle and the Alfa Romeo in front of him is going to get too much on the curve and just spin around. And he's going to be stuck there and lose about 6, 7, 8 seconds, which is perfect for us. That takes those two cars almost out of the equation for us um, right now. So you can see moving on to lap 6. We are doing well, our teammate's sticking with us, but he's not challenging us, he's not slowing us down. So we're almost dragging him along with us. So come the first pit stops, um, you can see we're moving up in the P14 now, and we're putting in good lap times, uh, especially on these hard tyres. It's around the same that our teammate's doing on the mediums, and he's got DRS from us every lap. So um, we are putting in pace, we are doing what we need to do. We've stayed ahead of Giovinazzi and Latifi, but here's where the problem comes, is when these cars which started on the soft tyres and pitted early, now they're coming to overtake us. And we're going to try and let them through at the best possible time. So Leclerc and Ricardo, we're going to try and let them through down the straight, let them get past us, let them get on with their race so we can get on with ours without losing too much time. Because they've got, they're just so much faster than us. So you can see we let Ricardo and Leclerc pass, but Ricardo's going to have a go at Leclerc, which is not what we need, because it's going to slow us down. Coming into turn one, you can see these two battling. Hopefully you can battle with them guys in the next couple seasons. But we've got a lot of upgrading to do. We're going to take a wide line here as well to let Alonso pass. And we're going to let those three cars pass, just so we can get on with our race and not lose too much time. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all about what's best for us. Uh, and we're going to be fighting for P15, P16 every race unless a safety car comes out, like I said. And you can see now we've got Giovinazzi behind. He, he's, he's right in our tail. We're thinking about pitting. Do we pit this lap? No, we do not. But Giovinazzi does come into the pits, so he's going to come into the pits this lap. And you can see, here he is, coming down the pit lane. And we're going to see how his pit stop goes. But 
with this happening, we're not going to be able to go much longer on the hards. It's either we pit now and avoid the undercut, or we do keep going a few more laps and, and hope maybe he gets held up by other cars. And you can see the pit stop for the Alfa Romeo crew is good, but he does get held up in the pits. I'm not sure who that was um, coming down the pit lane, but he did get held up. So that's good news for us. But we do decide to stay out a couple more laps uh, on these hard tyres because I didn't feel too bad. We were putting good lap times, but on this lap is when it started to fall off a little bit. Uh, you can see the front left is is getting absolutely smashed. It's uh, it's, get, it's getting battered to pieces. So we're going to come into the pits with about 14, 13, 14 laps to go, and we're going to go straight onto the mediums, and we're going to have a lot more pace. Then Giovinazzi, so if he does get the undercut on us, which he probably should because he pitted about four laps ago, then we will be able to come back at him and um, maybe get the overtake with a couple laps to go. So you can see we're coming into the pits here. We need a good pit stop from the pit crew, and it's a half decent go, pit stop. Three seconds, not the best, but it's obviously not the worst. And you can see coming out the pits, Giovinazzi he is coming down the straight, but we're going to come out just ahead of the Alfa Romeo driver which is perfect for us. We're on the mediums, he's on the hard, so we don't have to worry about overtaking him. But instead, we can get on with our race and we can try and chase the cars up ahead um, of Lance Stroll and Gasly. I don't think we'll catch them, but George Russell is also up ahead. I think he's about 10 seconds ahead on the hards. You can see here, he's nine and a half seconds ahead on the hard tires. So we're gonna try and catch him and see what we could do with these last 12 laps. And you can see coming around, he spun around. George Russell is going slow. Something's happened. I think he's spun. Going up. Uh, I, I don't know what that corner's called, but it's a pain in the arse, that corner. I hate it. But he has spun, I think, because he's now only two seconds ahead. So that makes our job a lot easier to go for that P15 on George Russell. And we're going to see here. He's coming up. He's got large stroll behind him. What does he do? He's coming up. He just, he just takes too much curb. Either that or he's just slabbed on the throttle too fast but he gets a bit lucky with the way he spun because he can come right back on the track um, and you can see us in the background now hunting him down George Russell and fresh hards but we are on fresh mediums we're going to be about half a second a lap quicker than him or we should be so this could be interesting these last few laps this is this is going to be a fight for P15 and we're going to see what we can do and you can see we are almost within DRS range here 11 laps to go and uh, this is this is as good as it gets at Haas right now. If you're fighting for P15 with a Williams driver, this is as good as it gets. Uh, no safety cars coming out so far. So we're, we're just going to enjoy this battle with the Williams driver and see what we could do. We are in DRS range now. So with 10 laps to go, we're going to sit behind Russell and wait for our opportunity. Save up a bit of ERS for when we do want to attack. And you can see we are very close to 10 laps to go, but we're going to go wide. We're going to lose it a bit. We're going to go onto the gravel under the cross. Thankfully, we pulled a bit away from Giovinazzi, so he would, he wasn't a danger from behind there. Because if he got past us, then we would be in trouble. Especially with him having DRS on Russell, it would be almost impossible to overtake the Alfa Romeo. So, P16 still a bit of a mistake, but we've got 10 laps to still make this happen. So, so we're not too worried, uh, but that left front is starting to wear down a little bit. So we do have to make the move soon, because the longer we wait, the better it is for George Russell. And you can see the blue flags are coming up. We are about to get lapped, but we are throwing everything at George. We're trying to, <laughs> we're trying to get as close as we can, because I want to make sure I'm as close as I can before I dump all my ERS. Because if I dump all my ERS and I don't make the move happen, then we're going to have to wait a couple more laps before I could try again. Because this Haas car is so slow in a straight line with a Ferrari engine, that it's, it's just, just not going to work. So we're going to let these lap cars pass. And we're going to see if we could do this tactically. So that when Verstappen goes past Russell. We can also make the move as well. So we're going to stick as close as we can to Verstappen. The house of the Red Bull. We're not going to be able to stay close. But we're going to try our best. Uh, and Verstappen's coming up to lap George Russell now. And he does. But George Russell he does it at the perfect time. Um, he's going to get DRS down the next straight. So obviously we won't be able to make a move. We are under half a second behind but you can see coming down this straight he's got DRS so we're gonna have to wait another lap and now we're into lap 27 and um, you can see more lap cars are going past Perez now about to pass Russell and this could be the time he's gonna have to move over to the side before they go down the DRS straight and we've got five laps we're gonna have to make the move and you can see he's letting pass there and we are right on his tail Perez is going around the chicane is George Russell gonna get 
DRS from Perez. I'm not sure if he's close enough or not. If he is not, we can make the move this lap. We're under half a second behind him, and he doesn't get DRS. So this is our chance. We're going to dump all of our DRS. We're going to dump our DRS. We're going to open our DRS, and we're going to have a go at George Russell around the outside. We're side by side going into turn one. We're going to make the move around the outside, and we get it done on the Williams driver. And with five laps to go, or well, actually four laps to go, because we've been lapped, so we've got we've got an, we've got an, one less lap to do. We have got P14 now. Um, P14 from George Russell. I think someone did a pit earlier. That's why uh, it was P15. I lost that, but we are up in the P14, which is going to be a fantastic result. But then I realised here my fuel is really low, and at this time in the race, I completely forgot about the blue flags. I completely forgot that I've been lapped. And I'm going to try and save as much fuel as I can to get that down to zero laps while keeping George Russell and Giovinazzi behind. And when you have almost half a lap of fuel away, you completely forget it, it, half a lap of fuel to save. You're going to be like five seconds slower per lap. And it's around here when I realized, never mind, I'm one lap short. I don't have to worry about it because I'm finishing one lap earlier. And by this point, it is too late. George Russell, he's three tenths behind us. We're using all of our ARS to stay ahead. But he's going to breeze past us. So all the work we've done is pointless. Because George Russell has got back through. And this is the final lap of the race. So we're going to take you through the final lap of the race. We're going to see what we can do now. Realising that we don't have to worry about fuel. Because we got that. So we're going to try and have a go at George Russell down here. Are we going to have a go? No, we're not. We're going to try and set ourselves up for the next DRS straight. Off this corner, we don't get close enough here, so we're going to try and be close enough for the next DRS. And we have had an absolute howler here, an absolute howler, and this is very frustrating because P14 was there, even though it's no points. It feels good to beat the Williams and the Alfa Romeos. So P15, I'm not happy with it all at the moment. And coming round into this DRS straight, we are too far back. We're too far back from George Russell, but we are going to have a go. We're going to see if we can go down the inside. We do have a go, and we make contact, and the move was never on. Really, that should have been a penalty. And coming up the hill, we're side by side with the Alpha, and I think the Alpha, he stuck, he stuck the wheel in where it shouldn't have been. So I think the second one was on the Alpha Romeo, but the first one, we should have probably got a five-second penalty for what we did to George Russell going down the inside. It was never on. I think it was just frustration from me, for me forgetting that we were a lap down. But with Antonio Giovinazzi, him going down the inside of us, I think that was his own fault. So, unfortunately, it is P15, and, and Giovinazzi did end up DNF, DNFing with um, half a lap to go. So, it's a shame for him. But we get driver of the day somehow. Um, it was a good race. We raced well, except for forgetting that we were a lap down. But it is what it is. So, P15 in Spain, not bad, but could have been, could have been P14. How do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs. And that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently. It's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be proud of the victory they secured here. So there we have it, P15, George Russell getting P14, it's a, it's a good result starting from the back of the grid, um, we managed to change all our power units, so uh, that's, that's one last time we'll have to do it this season, and the more we do it, the more chance later on in the season we'll move up on the grid because of other people getting grid penalties, so it's better to get it done early on in the season and take them, but P15, a little disappointing because we could have got P14, but I think overall it was a good race, uh, we showed some pace, especially on a track that I'm... Um, not the best at, uh, in my opinion, especially against the AI, but we have much more pace than our teammate. So so there we have it, but we'll take it. You see Espen Ocon getting a DNF, Giovinazzi says he finished, but uh, he didn't actually finish. Um, 
after getting that spin. But coming on to the drivers and constructors, we've still got six points. You can see Verstappen leading, uh, leading ahead in the championship, trying to win it like he did in real life. And in the constructors, we are still in seventh, ahead of the Alpine, Alfa Romeo and Williams. So, not bad. Uh, we're still seventh in the constructors, and we're hoping to finish in the top eight. But anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.